everyone, and welcome back to the show. We are here today with our first Cabral host call of the weekend, each and every Saturday and Sunday answering your questions. We never stop. Six questions Saturday, six questions on Sunday. Really an enjoyable part to the week for me, being able to see what's going on in your world and hopefully being able to offer you some sound health-based advice that you know that you can trust where there are no biases. Whatever I believe is the right answer for you, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, and whenever possible, I'm going to give you different multiple variants on what you might want to look into as well. So I try to give a couple minutes to each particular question. And then of course, lay it out as the foundation for where to get started. Maybe it involves a lab test, maybe a protocol, maybe a specific lifestyle adaptation, or a previous podcast to check out. So each and every Saturday and Sunday, hopefully you've been tuning in today's episode 814. So if you'd like to read along with the questions, you can just head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 81814. stephencabral.com 1814. All right, let's dive into our questions. Again, always trying to answer a dozen questions per weekend. If your question came in before December 4th, 2020, your question's already been answered. Uh, let's see. Today, what is today's date? Today is January 6th. Is that possible? Today is January... Today is January 23rd. January 23rd. Okay. So... Let's see. That means we are about six weeks behind, and that's pretty typical for the show. So again, if you write in, just assume that it's going to take somewhere around six, seven weeks to get to your question. I am happy to answer every single one of them. And of course, if it's a customer support question, uh, please do email support at equa dot life eqi dot l i f e no dot com uh, or if it's for health results accelerator just email support at stephencabral dot com and we would be happy to help all right because these questions, just to let you know, are not looked at until I open up this document. So my team, if you're writing about customer service and wondering where your tracking is and all those things, uh, unfortunately, again, we're, we're just letting you know, uh, we are not able to see these until I literally open up that document to look at them today. So we're going to get started. I did open up my uh, Ask Cabral document that my team puts together. And the first question is from Susan. Susan is asking, hi, Dr. Cabral. Thanks so much for sharing your natural health expertise with all of us. I especially appreciate your focus on the important things in life, family, helping others, health, vitality, and purpose. My 80-year-old mother has been slowly losing weight. After eating, she needs to have a bowel movement right away. This has made her not want to eat as much, and she is avoiding socializing more and more. She does have a few alcoholic drinks each day. Could this be the cause or something else? Thank you. All right. Susan, thank you for writing in, and I appreciate you uh, bringing up, you know, our real, the focus, the Cabral concept. Yes, it's absolutely about helping people to achieve their wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging goals. And that's the thing is, I believe we can help everyone with that in three to six months' time. So no matter really what you're dealing with, the fix is probably three to six months maximum. Now, if you have more than 50 pounds to go for weight loss, it might take a little bit longer, but you know, we'll get you there. And if you have a debilitating autoimmune issue or something like, you know, Addison's disease or myalgic encephalomyelitis, it might take a few more months, but everyone's going to get there. Like if you're listening to this in the beginning of the year, you'll get there by the end of this year. That's the good news. But then you have the rest of your life. So that's how I look at it. like, what are you doing then with the rest of your life? And I hope that you're creating big plans for you because you deserve to live a life you love. And that, that's the truth. So that's really what the Cabral concept is all about is I will help you get to your goal, but then I want you to then pay it forward in some way. Live a life of service, of helping others, of just making the world a better place because it can be a really troubling place sometimes. It really can with the media and with just, you know, again, a lot of people who are trying to hold other people back. Be, be a light in this world. That's all I can try to share with you. Okay. So 80 years old, losing weight, has to have a bowel movement after each meal. All right. As the body ages, really after the age of 65, there's no set date, but as the body becomes more catabolic, hey, the Vata body type is there very early in their life. But as the body becomes more catabolic, there's um, what's called a dysaerobic based um, catabolic based 
property going on within the body. Okay, so what does that mean? It means the body is actually breaking down at a faster rate than it's building up. It's why the protein requirements of those over the age of 65 typically go up a little bit because the body not absorbing, not utilizing, not repairing as quickly needs a little bit more, not a protein, but the actual amino acids. So it can be very beneficial. But since your mom's having a bowel movement after each meal, there's probably something deeper going on. And that deeper aspect is most likely some type of candida or bacterial overgrowth. And I say that because she's having a bowel movement after each meal. And the alcohol, although I don't believe it's the cause, certainly is contributing to it since it is fermentable. Uh, and causing uh, more oxidative stress in the body. So if your mom is up for it, I would run the gut base test. Now I run the big five plus the stool test with your mom if she'll do it. It just depends on how open she is. Big five plus the stool test. You can find those at equi.life. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. Now, if she's only willing to do a couple, then I would run the candida metabolic and vitamins test plus I would run the stool test, plus I would run the food sensitivity test in that order, okay? So that's where I would start. Thanks, Susan, for writing in. And then um, if she won't do any labs, then you may want to move into the CBO protocol. But again, um, we don't know what med I don't know what medication she's on, if this can be contributing, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, that's a place to get started. Remember, I can't provide you with any treatment protocols, any cures, any disease diagnosis on the podcast or off the podcast because that's reserved for conventional medicine. Ryan's up next, and Ryan says, thoughts on xylitol to benefit the oral bacteria environment and overall oral health? Great question, Ryan. Uh, I'm actually a proponent of xylitol. So I've read the research and you know, read it many years ago and because it's been out for a bit. Now, xylitol can actually be used uh, intranasally as well as orally to support beneficial bacteria in the mouth and the nasal passages and cut down on the incidence of cavities. So people sometimes chew uh, xylitol-based gums. So xylitol is a sugar, I don't know if I want to call it a sugar alcohol, but yes, I will call it a sugar alcohol. And so it's essentially zero calories. It is, uh, well, not, not high caloric at least. And uh, fine for the teeth. Okay. So we'll put it that way. So people are putting it in mouthwash. They'll put it in oral rinses. They're putting it in toothpaste. And I think all of that is fine. But I want to add a caveat to this. I'm not a proponent of consuming xylitol into the digestive system. However, I would be fine with it if someone decided to chew a piece of xylitol gum after a meal, although I'm not a huge gum proponent as well. Gum should really only be chewed after a meal. And um, the reason I say that is that when you chew gum, you are telling the stomach that food is on its way. So it's going to start to produce more digestive juices to be able to break down your food. And if you chew gum and there's no food coming, not good for the stomach, not good for the stomach lining or the digestive system, that's for sure. So but at any rate, um, you could certainly use it in toothpaste uh, or oral rinses that you'll be uh, swishing around and spitting out anyway. Good question, Ryan. Kirsten's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I work in the healthcare. I work in healthcare and have the option to receive the mRNA vaccination from Pfizer that is finishing trials now, more likely before January 1. My master's is in public health, so I'm torn about receiving a vaccination that has no peer-reviewed literature and is still technically exploratory. I believe in vaccinations, but this one is so rushed, has no peer review, has a relatively small sample on a global scale, and an mRNA vaccination has never been approved by the FDA, not that I really trust the FDA. I was hoping you could help me decide to get the vaccination or not, it should be available to me through my work in the next few weeks. Any input would be hugely helpful. P.S. I just finished IHP 1, yay, and working on IHP level 2. You are awesome, and I trust your expertise over anyone's. Thanks a million. Happy holidays, Kirsten. Kirsten, appreciate the question and uh, the feedback, and I appreciate the kind words. So, you know that I can't give you an answer on when to, whether to take the vaccine or not. You know that I can't give you that answer. Um, I've done 
1,813 podcasts before where I've never told anyone to take vaccines or not take vaccines. That's a personal decision. I support people either way. I have people in my practice who take vaccines. I have people in my practice who don't take vaccines. I have people in my practice who take some vaccines and some not. And that's their choice. It's their body. I allow them to make that choice and I support them in any way they want. Same thing. If someone comes to my practice and say, you know what? I really don't want to stop these medications. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I say, great. I'm here to support you however you want. If someone, we find they have a parasite on a stool test and they want to take an anti-parasitic pharmaceutical instead of doing a specific protocol, I support them on that. My job is never to tell you what to do. I really want to make sure of that. No one's job is to tell you what to do. You are you, your body, you decide. I, again, like I can't stress that enough. When we start to be able to tell people what to do with their body, that's a slippery slope. What else can we tell people what to do with their, their body? Should we tell people that they need to be microchipped? Should we tell, I mean, like, where does it end? So all I do is I support science, I support people, and I allow them to make their best informed decisions. So in terms of vaccines, I've said it before, but the best thing I can say is read all of the people who say don't to get vaccinated. Then read all of the literature you can on why you should. And then you have to make that most informed decision. You point out a couple things, though, about it not being FDA approved, which is true, and the first uh, mRNA uh, vaccine. Uh, and again, like, we have to be careful with this um, and this, this, you know, going back and forth because it, we just skipped all animal trials. So when we make humans the guinea pigs, literally, because there was no animal trials, then we say, okay, well, what's happening? Well, you know, again, that remains to be seen. We've some, seen some negative side effects. Maybe we'll see positive. But I will let you know that it's not one vaccine that this is even going to work. So that's why people have to just be in it for the long haul and understand that the older you are, you might need two to three vaccinations. Even younger people are probably going to need at least two. How long will it last? We don't know. And will it even work for this season, potentially, potentially not. Meaning that if people aren't allowed to get it until February, March, that starts to, the season for viruses starts to go down. There's a natural rhythm to these things. They're always lower in the summer and into the fall. And then they always increase during the winter. So do we need to get it more for next winter versus this one? Cause it's already passed again. These are just a lot of questions. And again, the thing is, like, I have friends who, if you even raise questions about it, they just lose their minds. And I just say, listen, can we just have a conversation about it? Like, what, why, why do we have to get so heated? This can be a topic that we actually have a debate where we say, how can we best help people? How can we best help them? Is this vaccine what's best for people or should we wait? Should we do more trials? Or again, we're not trying to say we're not trying to help all people, but we're just trying to say, how can we help all people the best of our ability? So, uh, Kirsten, I can't tell you to get it or not to get it. All I can say is keep doing your research, decide what's best for you, and at the end of the day, it's your choice. And, um, and you really don't have to justify that to whether you're going to do it or not. I mean, if people get mad that you do it, it's your choice. If people get mad that you don't do it, it's your choice. All right. Patricia's up next. Hi, I just listened to your podcast, 1764, in reference to ESIAC T. I had read in Healthline to avoid using it if you had breast cancer. It may stimulate the growth of breast cancer cells. Is this true? Thank you. You know, it's a good question, Patricia. It's a great question, actually, because it is one of the only contraindications for ECAC T uh, could be if um, someone has breast cancer. Now, we don't know. We don't know. And it's interesting because we don't know if it's all the herbs in ECAC T or just some. Uh, and it was also done in lab rats only. So we don't know if that's going to translate specifically to humans, since rats may never have a reason to ever or, or eat herbs in the first place. Does that matter? Uh, again, so we don't know, but I think you bring up a good point. And it's if you're ever dealing with a uh, cancer-based situation or true diagnosed disease that is life-threatening, you should always bring these things by your oncologist or work with a qualified healthcare practitioner. And then you can go through every supplement and everything, you know, one by one. So I, I hope that that's helpful. Um, again, like we don't know, but there's certainly at least, uh, I believe there's one or two studies that allude to it, that there was 
uh, a control for lab rats, and then there was the lab rats given a specific type of ECF tea. So it wasn't just the herbs; it was um, fluorescence, I believe. Well, I, it's 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 a specific type. It's not a type that I use. Um, it's already pre-mixed. It's already pre-made. I don't know if that has something to do with it. That it's already been made, and um, that it might have specific preservatives to do with it. Again, I don't know. They never did it with just the specific herbs. They just did it, I believe, with one particular product. But again, you raise a good point. And again, I always say, hey, let's be on the safe side. So let's potentially use it for other things, but not if someone um, has breast cancer. And I think that's I think that's a fine way to leave that for sure. Okay. Diane is up next. It looks like she'll be our last question of the day. Hi, Dr. Kral. I've been listening to your podcast for about two years, and I've read The Rain Barrel Effect. Your podcast is the highlight of my day, and your book has been life-changing. Thank you, Diane. I really appreciate that. Your okay says my question is about consuming flaxseed. I'm in my 60s and I've lived my life constipated and really having a bowel movement. Seven years ago, I started consuming two to three heaping teaspoons of freshly ground organic flaxseed right before I consume my meals, even before my DNS. This has changed my life. I have regular bowel movements, not diarrhea. I can't believe how good I feel and how, and realize how awful I felt. My question is, would taking this amount of flax with meals and supplements prevent my body from absorbing nutrients from food and supplements? I'm praying the answer is I can continue as I do. I don't think I can live without my flax, and I'm so proud of my bowel movements. <laughs> LOL. Thanks. Okay, Diane, great question. You know, I, I think that you're alluding to flax because of the phytates or phytic acid in it and how it can black, block, block absorption of certain nutrients. Listen, here's the deal. A lot of that is well overblown, and actually those the phyt phytates can actually be uh, preventative in colon cancer. So we have to take all of that with a grain of salt. Um, here's what I think. You're doing great. You're taking two to three teaspoons, which is equal to one tablespoon, and you're doing two to three of those a day. I would say that's probably just fine. Now, you're most likely postmenopausal if you're in your 60s, which means that that flax can actually help with estrogen levels, and that's not a bad thing. You may want to look at my female hormone health results accelerator, and you may want to actually use the flax with um, some sunflower seeds or some sesame seeds or a little bit of pumpkin seeds. So you start to balance all the hormones, but you're potentially doing just fine. The way to see how your estrogen is looking is actually to run the stress hormones mood and metabolism test. And if you haven't run, run that lab, you, you might want to run that. But I'm not concerned about the, the nutrient blockage. Again, if you want to run the starter kit, run the starter kit, and that will tell you what your vitamin levels and your mineral levels look like. You're taking the daily nutritional support shake, so you're doing great. If you can, I would take the uh, whole daily foundational protocol level three at 60 years old because you get that digestive enzyme in there as well, the omegas, uh, the daily fruit vegetable blend, the daily probiotic. I think that would be great. Um, and the other thing I could say is if you want to just say, hey, I don't know that I want to do this much flax, you might want to do this. You might want to do um, half psyllium husk or you could do two meals flax, like morning and dinner. So like, let's just say breakfast and dinner. And then you did psyllium husk um, for lunch. And that could be another great one for bowel movement. So uh, that's that. Again, in our practice, we used to like, we like to use the advanced fiber support. We use the magnesium citrate at night. We use the alkalizing vitamin C in the morning. All of those are great for your body anyways. And then I always say, most people can do great with a couple table, a uh, couple table, <laughs> a couple tablespoons of psyllium husk uh, per day as well. So, hopefully, this has been helpful, Diana. Just make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids when you're taking in that flax or psyllium husk putter. All right, take care, everyone. Have an amazing rest of the weekend. I will be talking with you tomorrow, answering six more of our community's questions uh, on our next house call. Take care. <laughs>